Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rome for the 149th slot conference. It's tremendous that uh, so many of you have been able to make it physically, and it's a fantastic testament to the resilience of our industry that 600 plus of you are here today uh, in person. So thank you very much indeed. And welcome also to the more than 300 who are joining us virtually and online. In this presentation, I'm going to really focus on three things that apply to our industry um, for next year and the years after. Firstly, uh, the recovery is very different by region. Depending on where you live, um, it can be a, a good recovery um, or, or, or very little recovery. So it's different by region. Secondly, we have yet to see a period of stability. We really haven't seen, we've seen lots of spikes in demand, uh, switching on, switching off, but we haven't seen a period of stability in terms of demand, and that makes it very difficult to plan for. And thirdly, because of this um, unevenness in uh, regional demand, we really need slot relaxation going into next year, and maybe even the year after that. Just to remind you all, I mean, you all know this, we all know this, COVID-19 has been the worst shock to our industry um, in the entire aviation history. When we look back at previous pandemics, previous shocks, they lasted six to 18 months before recovery. Um, so COVID-19 has been absolutely extraordinary in terms of its impact. And this has meant that airlines have really relied on, on aid, whether uh, directly or indirectly from governments, and also from the markets raising commercial finance to just stay afloat. And we've seen something like $243 billion of financial aid worldwide so far. It's been a real challenge to all of us. One of the bright spots in all of this has been cargo. Cargo has remained strong. Um, and also domestic markets. Again, it very much uh, varies by location, but some of the domestic markets have done pretty well. But of course, internationally, we really haven't seen anything at all. And as you can see here, at uh, September, we were still 69% below pre-COVID levels in terms of international RPKs. These, uh, these figures that you see here really show us how um, all of the markets domestically have been quite different. Russia, a really standout uh, success story. Um, America coming up very strongly. Uh, China being hit with Delta, uh, Japan and Australia. Uh, many of these are, are based on the impact of Delta uh, and of course government policies that were introduced um, that really kept borders shut. And that's been the really number one issue um, in, in, in throughout COVID. Okay, so uh, we saw that um, the domestic markets can vary very much dependent on where you are in the world. Um, and the recovery has also varied across international markets. Um, in and between North America and South America, the recovery has been relatively stronger. Also within Europe, although recently we saw a little bit of a tail off there. Um, of course, um, what's perfectly obvious from this uh, graph is the fact that Europe, Asia, Asia, North America, within Asia, it's, it's virtually been at a standstill. And as I mentioned earlier, travel restrictions, government restrictions about opening, reopening, or keeping borders closed have been the determining factor in terms of the ability to get air travel restarted again. And of course, uh, in Asia Pacific, we've seen some of the most restrictive uh, uh, closures in place. It's vaccination that really has uh, allowed governments to have the confidence to reopen their markets. And so we've been tracking uh, the rates of vaccination very closely because we see that as um, countries reach high levels of vaccination, then governments become confident to reopen their borders again. And again, here we see this very marked difference between say developing countries um, and the developed economies. So uh, countries such as uh, USA, UK, UAE, uh, relatively more developed, uh, have been able to get their vaccination rates up more quickly because they have more access to vaccine. And it's very, very important that vaccine is made widely available to the global population so that we can really see a, a global restart to, to aviation. The, uh, the thing is that once we see markets reopen, we know there's an enormous amount of pent up demand. People have been saving money through COVID uh, because they haven't been able to travel. 
So when governments announce reopenings, we see uh, these huge spikes in demand. And this is really good news. And here we're looking at 212F uh, relaxation for North America. Um, really good news. But again, from a planning perspective, from a scheduling perspective, it creates all sorts of challenges because how do you, uh, how do you manage to, to carry these spikes and how long do the spikes go on for? And that's a real challenge for all of you as, as schedulers. And here we go back to one of my first points. The recovery is so uneven, and uh, it's, it's very obvious here, the difference between Europe, North America, and Asia. And this is reflected into our forecasts, where we really don't see Asia starting to recover until probably the middle of next year. Um, and that means that international traffic will only start to pick up in that part of the world around, again, uh, second or third quarter of, of next year. Meanwhile, in America and Europe, the recovery is coming through more strongly. So uh, we can see that within Europe, we expect international RPKs next year to be at 75% of pre-COVID levels by the end of the year, which is a, a good outcome. Of course, um, international travel demand is taking much longer to recover than domestic, as I said earlier. and. Um, and that, and in some ways, that's lulling governments because some governments are looking at strong domestic demand and then assuming that international demand will recover as well. And that just isn't the case because, of course, for international demand to recover, we need international borders to reopen. And as we saw earlier, that, that simply isn't happening fast enough, particularly in Asia. The uh, bright point ac across all of this has been air cargo. Uh, we've seen really strong demand with air cargo. Uh, we've seen uh, actually it recovered to pre-COVID levels already uh, within this year. Again, it varies by region, but broadly speaking, it's doing well. And it's doing particularly well on North Pacific, where uh, the USA and China uh, are ca uh, in particular are, are feeding goods um, ac across the Pacific. So return to profitability delayed another year. Um, and uh, we, we expect to get back to normal around 2025, um, but we're still going to see a big challenge for all airlines in this coming year. Um, it very much depends also on where you're situated, and I'll, I'll show you that now. So we expect North American Airlines to be back into profitability by the end of next year, and uh, Europe is uh, following, although still in loss next year, um, you can see that Asia Pacific also still in lost. So really what we're seeing is that the developed economies, uh, particularly North America and Europe, uh, are on a pathway back to recovery. Uh, but Asia Pacific, Middle East, Africa, uh, Latin America are still um, going to be struggling next year. And that's a big challenge for all of us in our industry. That's the situation. Uh, it's a very uneven uh, market recovery. Uh, we have yet to see any period of stability. We're going to continue to need um, slot relief um, in next, next summer, in fact, probably even beyond that. Um, you guys have a real challenge over the next couple of days because somehow you've got to put the capacity into the market that best meets demand and also meets your, your, your goals for efficiency and profitability. I wish you all the very best of luck with that. It's very exciting. It's very challenging. We are on the road to recovery. Um, and. Uh, We'll be watching uh, with great interest uh, how things develop, especially just recently as we've seen the market openings in North America and other markets, and as we see Asia starting to come back into play. So enjoy the conference. Thank you very much again. I'm sure you'll have a great conference, and it's a pleasure to welcome you here today. Thank you.